It's the middle of the working day. Um, it's 20 to 12 right now. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not dressed for doing work on the car, but a very cool package just arrived. Um, I've always said, or at least I've learned on this project, that you have to do the things that you're excited about at the time. You can't just keep bashing your head against the things that you either can't do because of the weather um, or the things that just sometimes frustrate you because you're not that good at them. Um, so I'm stepping back from electronics, um, not really got the weather to do much on the body, um, but what I can work on is the interior. Um, and so I <laughs> got sick of being very cold in the car uh, and ordered something for the interior uh, the other day, which has just arrived while I was in the middle of a conference call. So absolutely no prizes for guessing what's in this package. It is some leather heated seats, which have been very well wrapped, I'm very impressed. Um, BMW Spares Scotland, thank you for that. Um, tempted just to leave them there, because I've got nowhere really to put them. <laughs> and I know that they're screwed down to a pallet. Um, but I would quite like to get them into the car really and um, the problem is is that the reason I got them for such a good price I paid 150 quid for the pair which I think is pretty decent for a pair of BMW heated seats in working condition is that they're only mostly in working condition um, one of the the switch on the driver's seat does not fully function uh, and so I'm going to have to transfer um, the switch from my cloth seats over to that. I'm also going to have to dig out all of the wiring for the heated seats from under the centre console uh, and put some switches in the dash as well, put some switches in somewhere to control them. Um, the switches haven't arrived yet, the custom centre console doesn't have any space for them um, and so actually it's not going to be a simple, totally simple job to fit, to retrofit heated seats. But yeah what I might do is get them unscrewed, get the passenger seat in at least and then bring the driver's seat, existing driver's seat and the driver's seat off here inside and take over my living room for the afternoon. So removing Z3 seats, two bolts at the front, or two nuts rather, two at the back. Obviously it's electrically adjusted but you have to disconnect the battery before you actually remove it otherwise you trigger the airbag light and you have to reset it. So shift it all the way back do the front ones, shift it all the way forward, do the back ones, then disconnect the battery and take the seat out. Ah, it should all be so simple. 16mm bolt at the back, well it's actually 16mm head. Uh, comes 90% of the way out and then sticks. I've hit it with uh, plus gas, tried winding it in and out, Starts off really smoothly, first sort of five, six turns, really smooth. Then it's progressively harder and then refuses to come out of the top. And I have no idea why. I shall keep working away. Uh, I'd replace that if I had a spare, but I'll run it through a die and clean it up before it goes back in. Right, all the bolts out on the passenger side, including the uh, uh, seat belt attachment. So I just need to get underneath now and pull the cables, of which there are a few. And then I can put this in the back seat of the battle bus, ready to go off to the storage unit before I sell them off. At least this one. So seat out, A, we can see that it's all pretty dirty and we need to get a hoover in here. B, it's all very wet. No wonder there's ice on the inside of the windscreen because there's a lot of moisture in here, I guess, from when the uh, windscreen, rear windscreen was cracked and split and when the, uh, the roof went. So I think what I might do, given that I'm planning to do a lot of work on this interior anyway, is either take the carpet out and dry it out indoors for a bit take this rear section out because it splits that'll give me plenty of opportunity to find the cables in the middle if they exist we don't know for sure that the uh, 
that the cables exist for the heated seats in this. They don't seem to always. Uh, and B, I can, well, I've got the seats out. It'd be much easier to get the centre console out, um, fit my roll hoops uh, and the um, subwoofer, which are going in the back there, and the amplifier, which is going to give these speakers a bit of a boost. I may stick some slightly better speakers in the back there as well while I'm at it. Um, also need to swap out the door cards for the black ones. This is going to be an all black interior for now. Um, I did think about swapping it all out for the tan one, but actually I think if the car's going to be dark grey then a black interior is going to look pretty good. Um, don't quite know what colour I'm going to do the centre console yet, um, but that needs finishing up anyway. It may go in in semi-finished state, we shall see, just so I can get it all back on the road again. Thinking about heated seat switches, I'm actually moving, so my replacement console, I lose the hazard switch button here and it's moving to where the power socket is, could actually add my heated seat buttons here, uh, maybe, um, or actually, do you know what, there, I'll just stick them in there, that'll be perfect, one, two, into that corner. Marvellous. Right, no point doing things by halves. Great big dehumidifier in here. I'm going to leave that for a few hours, suck all the moisture out of here, and hopefully it won't freeze up on the inside. Might warm it up slightly as well. Once that's all dry, I'll give it a good hoover out and then start stripping the interior down and get the seats back in. In the meantime, I can start taking this package apart. That's one noisy aeroplane. Now that's gone, first look at the seats. Uh, they look in really good shape actually. Passenger side particularly, just needs a clean. Bolsters are pretty good. Look, even the uh, seat belt retainers are in one piece, which is very rare. You could do with it going over with a bit cleaner. Crikey, both seat belt retainers are in one piece. That's incredibly rare. We need to restore the, uh, and clean the, uh, buttons for the seat belts a bit. A bit of wear on the driver's side bolster, but that's to be expected. I'll get that restored at some point. I actually like these a lot. I like them a lot more than even I thought I would. So that's pleasing. And they're screwed down. So I'll just get the uh, rattle gun and get those unscrewed. get these indoors. With the seats indoors it looks like the easiest thing to do is actually going to be to remove this whole plastic piece which has to come off in order to get the switch out anyway. So I might just take the plastic off, give it a good clean and then just swap that over with the switch at the same time. And then yeah, fingers crossed, I can install, when the car's dry, a working driver's seat. That was a lot more work than I was expecting. I mean, I guess these things always are. First lesson, make sure that your seat is fully uh, in the upright position, as in um, it's fully lifted away from the floor of the vehicle before you disconnect it. I had to get a little battery up here and run some jumper cables to power it to lift it up, because if you don't, this piece of plastic just will not come off. It gets wedged. Uh, specifically, this little metal tab means you can't withdraw it. Once you get the plastic away, so there are three screws, one there, one there, just under this handle, and one there on the end. Once you get those undone, pull the thing away slightly and then you'll find this loop of wire here comes 
through this gap and over the handle. So grab yourself, wherever it's gone, a little screwdriver and flip the loop of wire over there. Uh, then it comes a bit more loose, but then you have to unclip this from there. And if I can get a bit of light on it, can you see that black plastic clip? You have to slide a screwdriver under there and unclip it and it unclips on one side but not on the other. You have to get the screwdriver right under it to peel it back and then slide it away from the metal here once you've lifted the handle up to get it out of the way. And only then will the whole piece come off and you can actually withdraw it all once you've disconnected all the cables. Some of the cables are retained by little push and twist clips or not push and twist, just actually twist to remove those and then you can remove it. So I shall repeat the process now on the new leather seat, clean everything up, swap it over. Well, once you know how to remove it, it's much easier second time around. So three screws, one, two, three, uh, release the uh, release the clip, release this, this loop from the handle here, lever off the uh, clip there, and then pull it back. It takes quite a bit of force um, to get this, withdraw this from the, from the metal, because as you can see, this metal is a little bit rusty, so it's a bit corroded on. A bit of force comes off. As you can see, this switch has clearly been tampered with before. Someone's tried to repair it. Um, or at least done a bit of diagnostics. I think actually the people I bought them from did some diagnostics on it, but it probably just needs replacing. Um, they are like hen's teeth, I understand. So I might try and take it apart and fix it, or at least just soak it in some contact cleaner or something, see if I can get it working. But for now, I'm just gonna clean up this side, just while I've got access, just give all this a good clean, and then put the other piece on and pop these into the car. Maybe not today though, kids will be home soon. There we go. Nice clean plastic trim with working switch installed. Wasn't too bad getting it back on. Bit fiddly getting the loop of wire over the handle, but it's all functioning I think. Wires all tidied up and clipped back in. So once my uh, car is dried out, can all go back together. There we go, that'll do for this episode. Um, a short one, lots more interior stuff to come as I start to make this, uh, take this out. Uh, lots more interior stuff to come uh, as I try to make this car a nice place to be, as car reviewers always say. Catch you on the next one, thanks for watching, bye bye.